is a living God here. It's a pillar of truth. All people are so proud. We're here. Only I'm here because God did it. Hey! That's why they want the only reason I'm still here. Because God did it. Because God did it. Because God did it. Necessarily honk my horn today or make myself look as more than what I am. But I started, when I started to um, get this message, a little bit the Lord gave me some stuff. And I, um, they might know me, I take great uh, power in, in preparing a message to feed you because I want to give you a snack. I will. I must give you a meal. Come on here. Come on. Um, but I think that the church doesn't understand that you shouldn't celebrate your pastor just because they can preach. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think you should celebrate your pastor just because you, they can preach. I think, um, but you should celebrate your leader because of the pressure they have withstood. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Let me get that coffee. 
And maybe the rest of you will clap in a minute. Hold on, hold on. Maybe the rest of you will clap in a minute. I get done with this in a few minutes. We see leaders that smile. We see leaders that look good. But this is the season right now where you're going to have to check on the strong. Um, hold on, hold on. I started looking at some stuff. And it said, um, Dwayne, 97% pastors have been portrayed by someone they have pastored. Come on, yes. 70% of them battle with the spirit of depression. 7,000 churches close within a year. 1,500 pastors have quit quit, excuse me, in a month. 10% will only retire as pastors. Others will die pastoring. 80% preach, um, or 80% uh, will preach with still feeling discouraged. 94% of pastors' families will feel the burden and regret of burden of ministry. 78% have no close friends. 90% works really uh, 55 to 75 hours in a week. And now, uh, can we do uh, me a favor and celebrate whoever your leader is for standing under pressure? Can y'all open your mouths? I think y'all understand that. Bless you. Whoever your leader is, this is the season not to be quiet. Amen. This is the season to celebrate those that have stood the pressure. I started preparing for this message. Um, if you stay with me, I think a lot of times we... Uh, have repeated things that we heard in church without a proper understanding of, of what it really means. Absolutely, like we are quick to say God has taken us from another level to a dimension as if those both are the same thing. <laughs> when it's not. If I had time I would show you and I don't have time today I mean, but I will show you that a level and dimension are not the same. Yes, For one, watch this, when you move from level to level, yeah. you can use what you use in the previous level. Right. Mm. Okay. But when you hit a dimension, you cannot use anything you previously used before. Yeah. It will not work in a dimension. What works in a level will not work in a dimension. If I had time, I would go through and let you know that there are seven levels of one dimension. And there are seven dimensions and there are four rims to it. In fact, when you move from level to level, your prayer times, uh, when you're in level for level, your prayer time stays the same. Your friends stay the same. Your audience stays the same. Your emotions stay the same. But when you move from uh, to a dimension, you cannot use anything you have learned. Your friends change. Amen. Your prayer time change. Your audience changes. Your emotion changes because you cannot use anything you have learned at a level in a dimensional point. The people you used to talk to every day, now you don't talk to them for like three weeks. And it doesn't mean you're mad with them. It just means that God has you at another place. When you hit a dimensional point, you graduate to a season called, watch this, I don't know. Okay, maybe, okay. Now, you've mastered the previous season, but then you graduate to a season where you come to that I don't know because everything has become new. Now, when you were at the level, 
you had mastered it. Yeah, talk, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Talk. You know what's next. You know when to shout. You know when to dance. Some of y'all have become churchy, but you're only at a level. Yes, sir. You need to, amen, graduate to a dimension where you know how to change atmospheres. Yeah. So, uh, and I said that while saying this, that some of you are praying and asking God what's going on, and it's not um, just because of the warfare has gotten stronger, but it's because you're in a new place that you have never ever been to before. I'm in a new place, I'm in a new space. I've never been here before, so I'm in a place of, I don't know, I don't understand. Why you got me at this place? Why you got me feeling this way? Why I don't want to be around people? Why I don't want to be around everybody? There's certain things that irritate me a little bit more than it used to irritate me. It's because God is amen, placing you in another dimension. Maybe I got some very prophetic people. Come on. And I know some of you are very prophetic and you know everything. You know more than Jesus Christ. My Lord. But for me, and maybe a few others that are in here who are willing to tell the truth, we are uh, in some seasons, or we have been in some seasons where we just did not know. And didn't even know how it was going to turn out. But we trust the God that has it. When you get to that place, you'll find yourself laughing when you should be crying. You find yourself crying when you should be laughing. I'm calm now when I usually would be fighting. I'm quiet when I usually would have been cussing. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? But if you ain't got there, you're still at the same level and have not progressed to the new dimension. People, I really wanted around me or in my life. Now I can't wait for them to leave. Can't wait for them to get out of my face. I look at their text and still don't answer. See their call and still don't answer. And it's not that I don't like them or I don't love them. I'm just at another place. I don't feel like hearing it. Is there anybody that's in a season where you've never felt like this before and you don't know even right now what to call it? Mm. I don't know what to call this. All people are saying stuff to you and saying stuff like this. Well, if you tell me um, what's going on, maybe I can help you. I would tell you if I knew what to call it. But I really don't understand where it is and where I'm at and what God is doing. God, if you can explain to me or send me the manual, if you can just send me the directions and let me know what this next turn gonna be, because I'm at a place, I don't even know what the next turn gonna be. I'm scared that, amen, the next turn will be worse than the place I'm at right now. You see me shout, but you don't know my mind is slipping. Here in the text, are you with me? Yes, sir. Paul is on a ship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is not the Royal Caribbean. It's not. No. This is not the carnival. Okay. This is not Norwegian. But he is a prisoner on a ship. He's not a prisoner. This. He's not a prisoner on the ship because he did anything wrong. Come on. Here it is. He is a prisoner because he was too right for the wrong people around him. Talk, sir. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Some of you don't even understand that people don't like you because you're too right for the wrong people you're around. Right. Wow. Wow. Stop blaming yourself wow. for people not liking you. Yes, sir. See, some people will not like you because you stop being a fool. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't like you. Uh huh. Uh, they stop liking you because you don't say yes to everything they do anymore. You got a problem with me because I know who I am and I'm not going to lower myself to be your yes person or to do exactly what you want me to do and not say nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I'm not at that place no more. Amen. You're not going to just bully me around because some of you, amen, are bullying people around to do what you want them to do. And then y'all still try to call it God. Here it is on prophecy. Paul! I'm going to 
slow walk today slow walk is on a ship and then God sends the ship into a storm he doesn't send the storm to kill Paul but he sends the storm to tear up the ship to free Paul he sent the storm to wreck his ship to set him free he doesn't send the attack to kill Paul he sends the storm to tear up the system that Paul is in the system God wants me to let you know that he's not trying to kill you but he's after the thing that is holding you hostage now y'all want to be honest today, but I'll be honest. Amen. Been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Been preaching for 32 years, passing for 20 years. Been saved since I've been 10 years old. But a lot of things have held me hostage. Amen. 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 Okay, y'all gonna be quiet. A lot of things the devil did not get me into, I yield to temptation. See, people haven't just turned crazy on you. They have turned crazy on you because you stopped, amen, giving them cursed people your blessed money. I ain't got no help in here. You stopped giving folks that didn't want to do nothing a ride. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me go to this side. You stopped fooling the folks and telling them that your foolishness is all right and you held people accountable. Let me go over here. You started telling What's behind it all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Because God is trying to get you out of what's been binding you up. Yes, Let's be honest. He told you a long time ago yes, to come out. But you made the excuse. <laughs> yes, I'll stay in. Yes, sir. It felt comfortable yes, to remain around messy and because they would accept me I ain't got no help in and agree with me and run the tell I made a stand and said Abby you got to change so he tears oh my, God. my ship up yes 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 Rex come on here the very thing my God my God that was holding me he said I only wrecked it to save your life wish I had anybody here as a neighbor all I wanted to do is save my life that's a little here the Bible says I'm moving Paul gets as the ship goes in Paul gets a piece of the ship and uses I was going to say that and uses what he was holding yes, or what was holding him hostage to get where he needs to get. Yes, so he wrecked his ship, saved his life. Yes, sir. I don't know how, I don't know if anybody gonna holler back at me with this or I'm at a point now where I want God to save me. Come on, Amen. come on, Amen. come on. Okay, I'm gonna say something else. I'm not perfect, but I want God to save me. I got some issues, but I want God to save me. I got some struggles, and I want God to save me. I know you smoke. Come on, I know you drink, but I still want God to save me. Little did you know that God is coming for the ones that got the most struggles and got the most issues. They're the ones He wants to save. That's how you know they're more anointed because they got more struggles that they won't let them go. They wants to hold them hostage and will not let them go. Amen. You can become churchy. Amen. You you don't feel what I feel. Every day it's a struggle. Amen. Every day it's a fight. Every day it's warfare. But at this point, I'm saying God tear it up and save my life. If it's not for me, God tear it up. I ain't got no help in here. Lord, if they're not for me, tear it up. If the job is not for me, don't let me get it. If the cars gonna bind me up from serving God, don't let me, amen. Let the credit clear. Lord, if they're not gonna help me, tear it up. If the relationship gonna be toxic, tear it up. But 
but save. Save my life. God, I tell you, if it's going to hinder you, Shonda Makora Mahana, Shonda, he's going to Shall I get desperate for no 
nobody preach right now. Can, can I ask y'all a question? Hey, just a minute. Let me talk. Can I ask y'all a question? Do you really know that the favor of God is on you? Yeah. Oh, no, no, hold on, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, Cause I want y'all to go. I'm not talking about what they told you. I'm talking about what you know. What you know, sir. Do you know? Jesus. Well, you could have been yeah. if the hand of God was really on you. I'm gonna talk to those people right there. I'm gonna talk to your self religion folks that come every Sunday and you do all the church stuff. I'm gonna talk to folks that say, if you understand, if the hand of the Lord went on me. There's no way I'm probably walking church or have anything to do with church people. Amen. But because I love God, oh, oh, let me say it again. Because I love God, Cheryl, right. I ain't say love people like that. I love God so much until people don't even matter. I'm still going to serve them. I'm still going to love them. I'm still going to do it even because the hand of God is so on me that I know I should have been crazy a long time ago. I should have lost my mind. I could have been in jail. I could have been no, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. I could have been on the street. I could have been in a gutter. I could have been in somebody's crazy house. But I know the hand of God is on me. So what he'll do, he said, I'll wreck your shit, but I'll save your life. Come to make an announcement. You're not here. Good to go home, yeah. Shandabai. You're not here this morning just because you had nothing to do. God strategically have you here to hear this word. Then I'm going to wreck your ship because I want to save your life. Some of y'all trying to add up and say, you know what? What stuff ain't adding up? I'm going to talk to those people right here now and saying, they're going to say, you know what? I should have been further than what I am now. I should have had the house. I should have had the car. I should have had money by now. I should have had stuff there. Amen. But what's going on? God said, because you want to stay in the system. So if you stay in the system, come on here. The system is controlling you. And God said, I got to wreck the thing that's trying to control you because it's holding you hostage for what I want you to really do. I want you to know if God He's not going to unanoint you because he's not an Indian giver. If he's anoint you to do anything, he's anointing you to do it. I don't care if you do it in the bar. I don't care if you do it in the street. I don't care if you do it in the gutter. He's anointing you to do it. Oh. Let me preach to somebody and tell them he's anointing oh. you to do it. Churches, Paul, he makes it good God. He makes it on a piece of what was trying to kill him. Good God. What was holding him hostage is taking him to a safe place. Are you with me? Watch this. Uh, in the 28th chapter, he makes it to a place called Melita. Uh, and there, the barbarian people was kind to him. Can I tell you all this? Temporary uh, assistance is not a permanent assignment. Okay, that's good. That's good. Temporary, a temporary assistant or temporary assistant is not a permanent assignment. Preach, I agree. I think I will. Preach. Have you ever got stuck in helping people and you have you helped them so long? Until you realize you have added them to your permanent lifestyle in the name of being loyal. Talk, talk. That's good. Okay, okay, okay. You have taken on 
something Take it on. in your life yeah. and made it a made it a permanent fixture. Yeah. Talk, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And the only reason you won't get rid of that permanent fixture is because you think if I get rid of it, I'm not being loyal. Yes. Talk. So now you have decorated your misery. <laughs> It loyal. You called it being loyal to something God had only placed in your life to be temporary. Um, there are some people who you uh, are still helping that wasn't never supposed to be here that long in your life. Okay, y'all still looking dumb. You, you were supposed to help and then give them the deuces. You're <laughs> supposed to get them back on their feet. Bye. I ain't got no help, y'all. Y'all quiet. You're supposed to help them for a couple of months in your house. Now they still live in there. Ten years later, sleeping on your couch. Now you need new furniture. Y'all quiet in here. You're supposed to help them and give them the deuces. You're supposed to give them a ride and not sleep with them. assignment is over. But watch this. We have made somebody who was supposed to be temporary permanent. I didn't grow up rich. I know some of y'all were born so soon you about. That ain't me. Amen. I, we, we, we was not poor poor but, but just a little step above poor. <laughs> Uncle Matt said, look, there's a, a hair above poor. I mean, we were poor, but my mama made me feel like I wasn't poor. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, we eat chicken, you know, I thought it was a pleasure. Chicken every day. <laughs> chicken and rice, chicken and dumplings, some, some barbecue chicken. I almost thought it was, maybe that's why I like chicken and fried chicken. I still love chicken right today. My grandfather used to catch chickens. Yeah, man, they would ring that neck off, but I was scared of that. One time, one time, he came over and said, hey boy, go cut that jaw. I said, I ain't doing that. He tried, tried to, he even tried to show me how to do it. I said, I ain't doing it. So I had to ring the neck off. And my grandmama, she would, hey amen, after he would kill it and cut the neck off, the grandma would boil a big pot of water. Stick the whole chicken in the pot of water to get the feathers off. And she picked the feathers off. And about, 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 I promise you, about 20 minutes later, you smell some frying in the chicken in the kitchen. Because she knew how to cut the chicken into pieces. The same pieces y'all buy in the supermarket. She knew how to cut it with a knife. So we, you know, whoever liked the wings got the wings. Whoever got the thighs like the thighs. I remember one time, I was just y'all, one time. We didn't have no king syrup. Y'all don't know no king syrup. Uh, I took it everywhere I go. Every I hop, anybody ever been with me, you know I'm gonna bring my syrup. And you better not be ashamed. And don't let me leave my syrup. <laughs> I take it to my king syrup. And, and watch this. We didn't have any more king syrup. And my grandma said, I'm still gonna fix these pancakes. I said, Well, you got no syrup? I ain't eating them. She said, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. She took chicken gravy and made homemade chicken gravy. Y'all say ill. I was saying ill too with you until she put the gravy on the pancakes. And it stuck. when I tell you, see, but you gotta be anointed to make pancakes. See, some of y'all amen only add water to your pancakes. But my grandma would make pancakes from scratch. I'm talking about the butter, from the milk. I'm talking, I'm talking about eggs. I mean, some sugar. And I almost thought it was cornbread. So we would, amen, make 
Watch this. Substitutes for what we didn't have. I didn't have syrup, but she gave me gravy. We, when we ran out of toothpaste, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. We didn't run to the store. We used baking soda. We go to the refrigerator. Some of y'all need to do it now. All right, don't be quiet. Come on, be nice. I mean, the day of the day, you be mean. Don't be. Don't do that. All right, man. You gonna do that. We use baking soda. We didn't always watch this Stephanie. We didn't always have bubble bath. We had dishwashing liquid. Okay, y'all don't wanna talk that. See, see how boozy y'all are. Some of y'all like y'all ain't never got in no tub. Oh, well, maybe some of you have it, but some of y'all ain't never got in no tub. Amen. You had no bubble bath. Amen. But you had some dishwashing liquid in it. Watch this, Jason. When I was a child, we had something called flat, uh, floor model TV. Y'all don't know about floor models. Y'all got flat screens now. We had such a floor model. Watch this. I'm, this one over. We had such a floor model that you looked at the top of it. It was a record player and an eight track. Watch this all day. One day we were turning now and the knob broke. That did not mean nothing to us. We put a pair of pliers on top of that TV and we take those pliers. Vroom. I want y'all to catch this. That TV still worked a long time after that. It worked, but it wasn't fixed. What you mean, Pastor Jenkins? Which means everything that is functioning is not fixed. Everything that's shouting is not saved. But in this season, you just don't need to be functioning. We need God to fix us. I wonder if anybody really going to be honest and say, you know what? I don't need nobody to prophesy to me. I know what I need to be fixed. I don't need no prophet to tell me what need to be fixed. I know what I need, what need to be fixed in my life. Fix me, Lord. I wish I had anybody to just say, fix me, Lord. The Bible says that the Bavarian people, I got some more. The Bavarian people felt compelled because of the rain uh -huh. and the water and because they were wet uh -huh. to help Paul by building a fire. Yes, um, which means some people will only like you because of a moment. The moment sometimes can force you to have a heart for people that you may not like. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all don't believe me. I don't like you, Kenny. When your father died, I came and felt them. I'm not saying he's gonna die. Please don't say that. But you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm just using what he says. But I came and I felt sorry. <laughs> because of what has happened in that moment you still will treat them right be careful of the moments because they still are enemies it does not neglect that you didn't like me before the moment came oh y'all 
You didn't fool with me until the moment came. You didn't fool with me until I won the lottery. You didn't fool with me until I got my food stamps. You didn't fool with me until I got my insurance policy. The moment made you start liking me, but you still are an enemy because you're only in my moment. You still are a snake. The snakes, or the snake, jumped out of the fire and bit Paul on the hand. Put enough fire under them, they will reveal who they really are. Tell them no, they will reveal who they are. Tell them you can't help them, it will reveal. Tell about some of y'all looking down at the ground because certain situations have revealed what's really inside of you. I will, it will reveal the real person they are. While they were playing possum, but if you put the fire under them, the fire will reveal. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't like you, but they know they can't win without you. They can't stand your guts, but they know the hand of the Lord is.
lugares. Eu não sei dizer, eu não sei o que eu não sei. Eu não sei. You know, I mean, it's all times. It's all times. I mean, the way on that keyboard. You remember, watch this. Do you remember? Do you oh, all y'all don't like me? Watch this. Do you remember? Watch this. Do you remember? Watch this. I'm going to show y'all something. Do you remember when you first came to the ministry? I don't know when, when you came. I don't know when you came. I'm coming. Here, I promise you, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Watch this. Do you remember when you first came? The place you were in. But God changes. God turned you around. Yeah. Say it. That's why I praise Him. We, 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 we will come out to praise the Lord.
Jesus. Come on, you know.
Y'all clap your hand, let's celebrate Jesus Christ.